Okay, part two. Preparing to install the printed circuit board that we just built. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of disassembly here, so let's dive in. Uh, we're running, we're following the instructions here. This is the second set of instructions. The first set of instructions were how to assemble the replacement printed circuit board, and the second set of instructions are how to install it. So it says here the following photo shows the plate high voltage capacitors. They are usually covered with a cardboard tube. The idea here is simple you want to remove the old diodes from the terminal strip. The terminal strip will be used to extend the red wires from the transformer to the PCB assembly. One wire will be removed from the capacitor shown at the very top of the photo. Uh, I don't want to show you this because I don't want to get into copyright trouble, but there's a photograph that's applied in the instructions. You have to take my word for that. Uh, this wire is normally orange, orange with white tracer or white with orange tracer. Remember, here's where I get challenged because I'm colorblind and I can easily mistake orange for green. Yes, that's right. I can mistake orange for green. This wire will be moved to the PCB. Uh, they're talking about contents of the picture. Okay, fine. At the top of the supply, there are four diodes mounted to the terminal strip. Two on the strip going to the two, two going to the capacitors. Clip out all four diodes. Leave the resistors. Leave the capacitors in place. These parts comprise the 600 volt plate supply. Note 600 volts. That can kill you. Don't mistake that at all. Don't take that for granted. Or you should take that for granted, actually, that uh, 600 volts will kill you under the right circumstances, so be careful. These parts are not used. Leave them in for looks. Uh, and so, okay, we're leaving them in for looks, but where are my blue and glasses? But we want to locate the diodes. Here's a diode. Oh, you know what? Even though this supply has been off for months, I want to just make sure that these diodes are fully and completely discharged because I have an aversion to death. Uh, so I'm not sure which is positive, which is negative. I'm not expecting voltages to be here, but if there are any voltages here, they will drain out through the meter. And if there aren't any voltages there, there aren't any voltages here. Any voltages here? And that's one, one more. Any voltage here? No. And while well, we're at it down here, uh, 24 microvolts. I don't think we have to be worried about that. And three microvolts. And over here we have. We're doing this backwards, but I should be using the red probe, so what? And here, nothing, and here, nothing, and here, nothing. All of these capacitors are as uncharged as uncharged can be. That's good, so it's relatively safe. Be putting my hands in here and to be snippy snip snipping diodes. Let me just make sure I'm still in the shot. I am. And scratch that diode. that diode and scratch that diode and that's four diodes now he did say leave the resistors we're also going to leave these are the 
I'd rather have a non-conductive pointer just to be 100% consistently safe. This is the bottom of a capacitor. This is the bottom of a capacitor. We're going to leave these in place. They've been electrically disconnected from the circuit, so they're no longer going to be part of the uh, power supply. <clears throat> and for reasons, for aesthetic reasons, uh, Mike, the builder, kit builder, is saying leave these in for aesthetic purposes. So, okay, we'll leave those in for aesthetic purposes. He doesn't say anything about cutting that capacitor away. Um, top of the supply, four diodes. Two on the strip, two going to the capacitors. Clip out all four diodes, leave the resistors, leave the capacitors in place. Well, all capacitors are capacitors, right? So <clears throat> let's just look in here again and double check and make sure that we don't have any of those diodes connected and we do not. <coughs> Unsolder the one red uh -oh, here, wire from the leftmost capacitor lug. Remove this lead, move this lead over to the second lug. Uh, see drawing uh, from the right on the terminal strip. Do not solder this wire at this time. Unsolder the red wire from the leftmost capacitor lug. That is down here. So, hmm, I don't have my fine needle nose pliers, but I do have a larger pair of needle nose pliers, and I guess that's what we're going to use to hold this wire while I liquefy the solder, but can you see what I'm doing here, people? No, you cannot. How about... Can I zoom in here? Trying to show you exactly what I'm after here. So... That red wire... We are going to desolder and move. Might have to get out my solder gun because this is well, I think that for this wire it is safe. You cut right at that lug. Pull it out. And now where does Mike want this to go? I'm sorry, the red water from the road. Move this lead over to the second lug, lug number three, from the right of the terminal strip. One, one, two, three. Hmm. Hmm. I think uh Hmm. Got myself into all kinds of trouble with shorts. I think it's here. Can you see that? Where my finger is? I think that that's the solder lug that they want the red wire to go to. Um. Oh bother, I turned my solder uh, soldering iron off, no wonder. Uh, I'm going to have to wait a minute or two for that to warm up. I'll be back. Alright, soldering iron's heated up. We're going to see if this solder sucker doohickey thing my bob is going to work. It did. God, it's been ages since I've used that thing. A little, 
speed end here, take off. And I wanna I wanna clean that lug with a little bit of alcohol. I'll be right back. I almost forgot to turn the U back on. Just to clean off some of that schmutz. Now they say don't solder the wire. So I'm going to just uh, snippy snip snip the lead. By the way, oops, spray painting on the workbench. Wasn't paying attention. And that is a solid wire. It's not <clears throat> stranded. I'll just make a little hook, even though Mr. Carlson and others don't care for hooks. <clears throat> I think that D-Lab guy also does not like hooks. But we're just going to put that there for now. And where we go from here. On side of the rear, put the wire, do not start with this wire at this time. Check your work. You should have two red wires on the terminal strip. These are the high voltage winding from the transformer. The two red wires running to the left will be added later. Now according to the picture, these two red wires are on different lugs. Uh, and I got myself into all kinds of trouble on the first rebuild where I thought those two wires went together and I was uh, fortunate that I did not uh, permanently damage the transformer. So, uh, I think I've got this oriented right. Right to the left will be added later. Okay, cut the white orange wire from the capacitor lead. Capacitor on the left with the 100K, 50K resistor attached. That's over here. Uh, this wire will be connected to the printed circuit board later. Right now, it goes to a single lug terminal strip just above the bias control. Uh, the bias control is right here. There's the single lug. Can you see this? No, you, you just... Where are we? Come on. There we are. There's the single lug terminal strip. There is indeed an orange-white wire. And if I trace that wire... What am I doing here? If I trace that wire, it goes here. See I'm me wiggling it. And it terminates over here. So they want me to remove that wire. Cut the wire. This wire will be connected to the PCB later right now. So we go snippy snip snip. Am I I'm in the shot, yes? Yes. And so now we move this over here. Because what we want to do is we want to pull this wire through. And the reason that we're going to pull this wire through is because it says that's going to be connected to our new printed circuit board right here uh, and that printed circuit board is going in this area underneath which is actually the top this is the bottom this here is the bottom of the power supply so this white orange is going to go through one of these holes when they open up so right now we're just going to leave it hanging and I won't strip it just yet uh, so that that end is kind of protected. And we'll go to page six. Page six. In the following steps, it is best to cut the resistor's leads and then heat the joint and remove the old lead. 
The lugs on the bias pot are fragile. Bias pot. Uh, if you break one off, you are in deep doo-doo. That's what Mike says, deep doo-doo. One, remove the two resistors connected to the bias control. Okay, so let's get a better looky here. And remove the two resistors connected to the bias control. So here's one, and here's two. Okay. Two. Remove the ground lead from the bias control. The ground lead. That must be this. It's the only one left. It's not insulated. Remove the large blue wire from the capacitor terminal. Large blue wire from the capacitor's terminal. Which must be this. And you guys still in the shot? You're seeing what I'm doing? Okay, that was the large blue wire from the capacitor terminal. And now remove. I'm back. So the battery died on this uh, camera. I think it's an indication that the battery is dying, uh, needs to be replaced because uh, this video camera is kind of old. But be that as it may, I was able to realize that the battery died uh, before continuing on uh, with the deconstruction here. So where we left this a moment ago for you, and it was yesterday for me, um, was I disconnected this blue wire and now the instructions call for the removal of the small green wire, which I am kind of expecting slash guessing is this wire. So I'm going to cut it off. And I think this is the right wire. And my recollection from the other AC4 that I rebuilt, I think this is correct. And by the way, for those of you people who are who may be fascinated by color blindness, what color does this look like to me? Well, it looks orange. It does not look green. So that's part of the challenge of being colorblind and dealing with color wires, uh, which is probably why I'm not more advanced at electronic repair because of my colorblindness issue. Anyway, uh, so now we've got that cut. It says the next step to remove old capacitors, use pliers and twist the mounting tabs off. The capacitor can can then be pulled out of the chassis some of the capacitor mounted with two small metal tapping screws. Remove the screws, keep some for use later, and then remove the old capacitor. Drake chose to solder some capacitors to the chassis. Don't waste your time uh, uh, to unsolder them. Remove the hardware and pry the capacitor loose at one, one end, then rock it back and forth to break the solder. Uh, and I don't know if you can see this, but what we're talking about here in a bit and can you see that just past this that's what they're talking about soldered uh, to the chassis um, the last one I did I actually desoldered it I did not uh, take the recommendation uh, that they had um, but uh, or did I use a Dremel tool and just cut it off I can't remember Anyway, we'll, we'll see, but uh, the next step is here are some the back end of some screws that we need to remove. I'm pointing, but you can't see where I'm pointing. Uh, so back end of screws for these capacitors. Here's another set of screws for that capacitor. And then over here we have the solder to remove. So we're going to be removing these three capacitors. Um, and uh, I guess... I don't recall it saying that we should 
disconnect these diodes too, but I do recall that on the other one we did. So that's kind of the next step. And I I think what I'm going to do, rather than blow out this video so that it's super long, it's pretty obvious what you need to do here, right? You need to remove this capacitor, you need to remove this capacitor, and you need to remove this capacitor, and however you do it is your business, but all three are junk. Um, so whatever components are attached to these capacitors are going to go away. Um, the wires will be cut, but not uh, don't remove them unless, of course, they're jumpers. Um, the jumpers can go away, um, but the wires that uh, ultimately run to the transformer, cut them off at the capacitor and uh, don't uh, don't cut them back because you will need all of the length or might need all of the length in retooling them. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove these uh, three capacitors and then you're going to rejoin me after I've gotten those uh, off and we'll then take it to the next step. Okay? Okay. Okay, in the aftermath of my handiwork, we have three old capacitors removed per instructions. And those are garbage. They are not to be saved or thrown into the junk box. And as I mentioned before, uh, the uh, instructions kind of suggest not to bother with the lump of solder that's holding this uh, capacitor in. But uh, just to satisfy my latent perfectionism, I removed the solder anyway and, um, you know, sanded this down so it's smooth. I uh, just like the aesthetic of uh, doing it that way. You don't have to, as the instructions note. So we have a wire that used to be connected to this uh, capacitor here. We have a wire that used to be connected to this, if you will, center capacitor here. And of course we have the green wire and the orange and white wire and the blue wire. And according to the instructions, we should have, it says actually, you should now have all three bottom capacitors removed. We do. The center terminal strip should have one yellow wire connect, that's here and one blue wire connected, that's here, and a small gray wire is also, turn the page, connected to the ground middle terminal on this terminal strip, which is here. Now, I've kind of lost count of how many, um, how many diodes that we're dealing with here, but there is a diode here, and the instructions don't explicitly say whether to remove this or not. Uh, I'm going to leave it here for now. Uh, I can always snip it off as we move forward if it's not supposed to be there. And if I'm really unsure, I can always take the bottom cover off of my other AC4 to see if this um, diode remains or not. I think that it gets removed. Uh, but I'm just not 100% sure. So we're um, we're going to err on the side of caution here, and uh, we're going to leave that on for now until we either see something explicitly, maybe I skipped over it or whatever, which would account for whether this diode stays or goes, or I compare it to the other power supply and decide uh, uh, and determine based on that whether it stays or goes. I think it goes, but I'm not 100% sure of that. We'll move on. Uh, uh, there's a note here, it says, small wire question mark, large wire question mark, the large wires come to and go from the old capacitors, the small wires come from the multi-cable that goes to the radio. And, uh, yeah, the wires ultimately, the large wires ultimately go to the transformer, but I, uh, whatever. There should be no wires or components connected to the bias control. And here we see that that is in fact the case. Okay. Uh, so, locate the PCB assembly you had laid aside before. 
he's referring to our little masterpiece here. Uh, the wires used to connect the PCB to the AC4 supplied with the kit. Yes. Uh, all those wires are contained in here. Um, this uh, outer coating is just to keep all the wires in place. We're going to pull the wires through as we need them and uh, the outer insulation will be discarded. It's not going to be used as part of this kit. Uh, solder two blue wires to the pads blue and blue A. Red, orange, gray. Where am I here? Ground, gray, red, orange, red. bias wiper, bias A, bias B, blue A, blue. Okay, so blue A is up here. Uh, so two blue wires to the pads, blue and A, and then solder the two yellow wires to, uh, to the pads, yellow A and yellow B on the left edge. Um, I don't think he's talking about this. I think he's talking about uh, cutting lengths here, which is fine, except he doesn't say how long, at least not here. We're going to have to do a little bit of checking. Uh, yellow water side to them. There should be no yellow water side solder to the yellow pad. Make sure you trim off any excess wire leads. Can't fold the yellow and blue wires into a single loop. Solder both ends. PCB mount so three 150k wires are on top. Let's see if we have two blue wires. I think there was a note elsewhere about how long these wires were going to need to be. Which I will look into. I am, uh, sorry, I'm off camera. I'm cutting into this outer insulation, which is actually quite stiff. see one blue wire. Did you guys see more than one blue wire? So I'm going to pull where am I here? I'm going to pull this wire out if it will come out. Doesn't seem to want to come out. Let me put this down on the bench and open it up a little bit more. I still only see one blue wire. It still doesn't want to come out. So we're going to keep cutting this outer insulation. And I'm just deeply scoring this. I'm not cutting all the way through and I'm just using the wire itself to finish the job. I don't want to slice up the wire inside the jacket. Like 
so. It's starting to move a little bit, but there's no need to force it. Okay. So I've got the wire out of its insulation. And we want the blue wire. So we have the blue wire. And the wire and harness just went on the ground. I'm going to stop recording at this point. I'm going to look for notes. I think that there's a note somewhere about the length these wires need to be. Otherwise, I would just fold this in half and cut it in half. Uh, but before I do that, let me see what the instructions have to say. So I'll be right back. 